Welcome back to Archer's World of Literature. Uh, today we're going to be continuing the 2023 preparation content and I've come up with this little idea. I've seen quite a few people do it, um, but I've decided to run with it myself. And that is 12 friends, so 12 friends of mine that are into literature and reading, like myself, to pick 12 books for my 2023 TBR. So what that is, is I get these 12 friends to share with me their favorite book, or if they can't choose one of their favorite books that I myself haven't read, and then I'm going to assign it a month to read it um, during next year. So I've got, I'm going to be covering favorite books of 12 friends all in the year of 2023. So in this video, I'm going to go through what those 12 books are, a little bit about um, the, the stories behind the recommendations and the people um, and give everyone a shout out as well because all these people do some amazing stuff um, and they definitely deserve you guys to check them out as well. So I'm going to get started now. We're going to start off with January. Um, but before I do that, I got to hit you with the intro, right? So first up for the month of January in 2023, I've decided to choose this book from my friend Clarice. Uh, Clarice is a writer. Um, they do amazing work. You can follow them on, I've just got everyone's profiles on here. You can follow them on iWrites on Instagram. I'm going to pop it up here. Um, just a beautiful writer. Um, just that's all I can really say. Just a, um, a po does poetry um, and writing and uh, they've been doing these graphics recently as well, um, attaching their, their writing to these graphics and it's incredible. So this one is from them and that is On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. Now this is one I don't know all that much about, but it has been on my radar for a while because it just looks stunning. And from what I have heard, I've heard some good things about it. Um, so I'm going to get up the synopsis here and briefly read them out for each each book because most of these ones, apart from a couple, I really don't know all that much about it because the whole point of this was to um, expand my reading uh, through friends and so see what my friends are reading and what really connects with them. So, On Earth Where Briefly Gorgeous is a letter from a son to a mother who cannot read. Written when the, little, when the speaker, Little Dog, is in his late 20s, the letter unearths a family's history that began before he was born, a history whose epicenter is rooted in Vietnam and serves as a doorway into parts of his life his mother has never known, all of it leading to an unforgettable revelation. So that just sounds amazing. Um, the title, right, On Earth Where Briefly Gorgeous... I'm just looking at the cover as well, um, just this person getting embraced in a hug. Um, I feel like this one's going to be a little bit hard-hitting. Um, that's just my guess on, you know, sort of the description and especially the cover. The cover's really emotional. So I've chosen that one for January because I had some pretty big, um, I had some pretty big reads, some, some larger books uh, for January. And this one's a bit of a shorter one, saying here 246 pages on hardback. Um, so I'm going to start off with that on January. So thank you to Clarice for that recommendation. And I'm going to move on to the next month. Now for February in 2023, I'm going to be doing my amazing friend, my wonderful friend Isla. I'm going to be doing her recommendation, which is To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I haven't read any of Virginia Woolf, and I cannot believe that I haven't. Um, she was going to be on my radar for 2023. She was going to be slipping in in some months there anyway, but I've decided to make my first one To the Lighthouse, which is Isla's recommendation as one of her favorite books. So funny story, um, she actually was going to recommend me The Secret History as her favorite book, but I already had that on my one of my TBRs uh, in February I think I already had it on for February, um, so I decided to ask, you know, if she had a different favourite book, because I was going to be reading her favourite anyway, so um, she ended up getting sort of the lucky two, two, uh, two favourite books in, in my TBR. Um, but she she's amazing, she does some amazing bookish content, she's got like sort of a bookstagram, I, I guess you would explain it, um, and a bit of sort of um, a reading aesthetic and sort of book content on TikTok as well, so both of those in the description as well, and I'm going to pop it up somewhere here on screen as well um yeah she's an amazing person um and i'm really looking forward to getting into some virginia wolf so i can talk to her about it because i keep saying i'm gonna read it and i haven't so it's saying here to the lighthouse the serene and maternal mrs ramsey the tragic yet absurd mr ramsey and their children and assorted guests are on holiday on the isle of si uh, sky from the seemingly trivial postponement of a visit to a nearby lighthouse 
Wolf constructs a remarkable moving examination of the complex tensions and allegiances of family life and the conflict between men and women. So this is actually quite a short one as well, um, but I've just heard her, her writing is so profound um, and really ahead of its time. And yeah, a, a Kickstarter for um, modern women writers So I'm um, as in the modernist movement, so I'm really, really interested and excited to get into The Lighthouse. So March, uh, on my March TBR, I do have War and Peace. That's going to be part of my buddy read with Isla, actually, and I'm going to be doing that as a read-along on my channel. But because War and Peace is gigantic to say the least um i wanted to pick one of the smaller recommendations that i got um and so i'm gonna go with my friend jay you can find him as jay the author on instagram he's a writer um he's like does street writing but he's also a published writer as well um and he also has a youtube channel which i'll link in the description as well where he actually delves deeper into the process of writing and what writing does to the human the human mind and how writing can be really good for you and, and different um, different styles of writing and stuff. And he's he's incredible. His, his published books are amazing. Go and check all of those out. Incredible guy. Um, and he is, yeah, he's recommended Junkie by William S. Burroughs. Um, I haven't read William S. Burroughs. I am going to be reading Naked Lunch by Burroughs either towards the end of this month I'm recording, December 2022, or maybe in January. So there might be two, two Burroughs uh, in the first half of next year, but I'm going with Junkie by Jay, so um, I'm really keen to get into that because once I finished Naked Lunch, I was probably going to be going to Junkie uh, anyway. Uh, Junkie is a candid eye witness account of times and places that are now long gone, an unvarnished field report from the American post-war underground. Unafraid to portray himself in 1953 as a confirmed member of two socially despised underclasses, a narcotics addict and a homosexual, Burroughs was writing as a trained anthropologist when he unapologetically described the way of life in New York, New Orleans, and Mexico City, that by the 1940s was already demonized by the artificial anti-drug hysteria of an opportunistic bureaucracy and a cynical prostrate media. Um, so, yeah, that's the description. That sounds incredible. Um, another relatively short one. One thing I've noticed with modern classics is they're short, but they're sweet. They're, pu they're full of punch. They're packed with so much power for such short books, and the modernist movement was able to do um, some incredible things on a really short page count. Um, so yeah, cannot wait to get into that. So thank you for the recommendation, Jay. So for the month of April, I have gotten a recommendation from one of my close friends, uh, Jaden. So Jaden is Jaden the Street Poet on Instagram and YouTube. I'll pop, you know, the deal. Um, should be somewhere here. He's amazing. He's also a writer. He's got published works um, with Jay and he's, you know, currently writing some things with him. They collaborate a lot. Um, and they've just got a very, um, hand in hand aesthetic. They, these guys are just such hard workers and he is just super, super talented. So Jaden does YouTube videos about street writing and street poetry, um, and also like vlogs around, um, like street art and um and writing in melbourne as well uh also got a, got published works out there go and check them out on his his social media and stuff just absolutely incredible stuff like it needs to go viral it needs needs to blow up because i'm telling you like these guys are on or something like incredible stuff but Jaden has recommended me the lost man by jane harper now i've heard of jane harper of course i uh, haven't heard of this title but Jaden was actually going to give me the secret history as well. So same thing with Isla. I already had it on my list. So I offered him another chance, if you will. Um, and that was, um, he decided to give me The Lost Man as one of his other favorite books. Um, so yeah, I didn't really know all that much about it. But here it says, two brothers meet at the border of their vast cattle properties under the unrelenting sun of outback Queensland. They are at the stockman's grave, a landmark so old, no one can remember who was buried there. But today, the scant shadow it casts was the last hope for their middle brother Cameron. The bright family's quiet existence is thrown into grief and anguish. Something had been troubling Cameron. Did he lose hope and walk to his death? Because if he didn't, the isolation of the outback leaves few suspects. So that sounds really cool, an outback Aussie thrillery mystery crime sort of sounding book, um, which I'm not all that familiar with. I haven't read all that many thrillers um, or outback Australia books. I haven't really delved as an Australian. I haven't read too many Australian authors, So, and he's really on top of that. So if I end up liking this, I'll be coming back to you for more recommendations. So they better, you better have them ready, Jaden. Um, so next up, we've got May, and I've gone with The Stor uh, Story of the Eye by... I'm going to butcher this French, so apologies, Robin... Uh, I'm just going to assume Georges Bataille, 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 
Georges Bate, maybe. Uh, it's a French book. It's a cl- French classic book. Um, so my friend Robin recommended this. Um, you can find him at RC Walden on YouTube and Instagram as well. Um, I'm sure you've heard of him, but he'll be... I need to stop saying he'll... They, they'll be on the screen. You guys know the deal. Um, I need to post, post-edit post Archer, post-production Archer. Um, just, just do what you have to do. Uh, so yeah, Story of the Eye sounds super interesting. So it says here, Story of the Eye is a 1928 novella. So it's a short one. Written by Georges Bataille. <laughs> The details the increasingly bizarre sexual perversions of a pair of teenage lovers, including an early depiction of omorashi fetishism in Western literature. Not going to pretend I know what that means, but we'll find out. It is narrated by the young man looking back on his exploits. So that sounds really interesting. Um, I'm really fascinated with books that go into topics like that when they're written so old. Like, I mean, I like banned books and stuff like that. So I find it pretty amazing that we're able to read things like that these days in a in a kind of society where it's not as bad to look at those kind of things and, you know, read that or whatever. Um, whereas back then it would have been so hard to obtain a physical copy or something like this when, it, you know, it probably would have been banned because of how explicit the nature of the story is. So I find that really interesting. So thank you, Robin, for that recommendation. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting to that one in, when did I say, uh, May. So that's coming in May. So in June, um, I've got a recommendation of uh, my friend Abel's favorite book, um, and he actually told me Frankenstein. And this works perfectly for me because I was going to do a reread of Frankenstein probably in 2023 anyways. And so the story behind uh, this recommendation and, you know, the relation of it between me and him, uh, I went to high school with Abel. He's one of my really, really close friends. um, And we actually both studied Frankenstein as one of our English books um, in our final year of high school in year 12. Um, and we were made to, you know, write essays on it and analyze it and stuff. And because of that, I didn't like how English worked in high school with the, you know, overanalyzing and being forced to sort of read specific texts and sort of focus on it so much that you sort of get demotivated, demotivated from reading. However, he said that for him, he actually really enjoyed it when he was reading it, when he was studying it. For me, I enjoyed it when I read it and I stopped enjoying it when I was made to just think about it 24-7. Um, But I think now I'm able to look at it in a lens where I have finally gotten over that and I'm like, I don't have to write an essay on it. So um, I have sort of overcome that trauma, if you will. Um, But I am really looking forward to rereading this and seeing my updated thoughts. So thank you for that, Abel. I don't think I need to read a description on Frankenstein. Uh, We get Victor... uh, I'm sorry, we get Frankenstein making his monster, Frankenstein's monster. Um, and it's got lots of questions about life and death and whether humani- humans um, should try and ascend to a greater power. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of really good themes in this. Um, as much as I didn't really connect with it when I was being forced to overanalyze it, there were some really good themes that I could understand and respect. So looking forward to that as well. So for this next one in July, I'm going to be reading uh, my friend Oshin's recommendation, and that is Demian, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and I'm also hoping I'm pronouncing this right, by Hermann Hess. Um, could be wrong, but that sounds, sounds German, maybe? Hermann, Hermann? Uh, Hermann Hess, Demian. So that is Oshin's recommendation. Um, he is also a writer based in Melbourne, um, does some amazing, really beautiful um, sort of writings on, on the views of, of nature and life and things like that. He's really, really good. Um, he's got a channel, uh, his writing, his writing page on Instagram is Abyssal Youth. So follow him. He's incredible. Um, really deserves all of your support. So go and check him out. Uh, Okay. If it looks like I was crying, (coughs) I just yawned. So, uh, so Demian is saying on Goodreads here, Emile Sinclair is a young boy raised in a bourgeois home amidst what is described as a shine welt, a play on words that means word of light as well as word of illusion. Emile's entire existence can be summarized as a struggle between two worlds, the show world of illusion, related to the Hindu concept of Maya, and the real world, the world of spiritual truth. In the course of the novel accompanied and prompted by his mysterious classmate Max Demian, he detaches from and revolts against the superficial ideals of the world of appearances and eventually awakens into a realization of self. I knew nothing about that before actually reading it just now while filming. And that sounds incredible. So, Oshin, thank you. That sounds like right up my alley. And I was right. It is German, German literature. So, I know my, I know my names. I'm, I know my names. Uh, so, yeah, go follow him. Thank you so much, Oshin. If you're watching this, that sounds awesome. 
August. My friend Josh, uh, another friend, my my best friend, one of my best friends, um, he actually got this for my birthday earlier this uh, few months ago, this year, September. Um, and this is one of his favorite books. He was going to tell me, um, I remember I was talking to him when I asked him, I said, okay, so I've got this video idea. Can you give me a favorite book? Um, I know you're probably going to say books that we've both read because he also really likes A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones. Um, we really like the Harry Potter series as well. So we've, we've, our reading is quite similar with what our favorite books are, but the one that I hadn't read that he really likes is Frank Herbert's Dune. Um, and I've been meaning to read this a long time. I'm really intimidated by it though, because I've heard so many polarizing things. Like people really love it or they like despise it, like completely hate it. Apparently it's quite philosophical. It's science fiction, but it's like philosophical and can get quite confusing. Um, so I'm just going to try it. Um, I don't DNF book, so I will finish it and I will make up my mind at the end. So thank you to my, thank you, Josh, firstly, for the recommendation for this video. And secondly, um, another thanks for this amazing copy. It's like this hardback sort of, um, deluxe edition. It's gorgeous. Uh, so this is actually one of two. So apart from Frankenstein that I have in person, so I don't know if they go on Goodreads to read it to you guys, but, uh, far in the future, two powerful families are locked in a bit of feud. The Duke Atreides, outmaneuvered by his rival, Baron Harkonnen, must move his family to take up administration of the planet Arrakis, also known as Dune. A vast desert world where water is worth a fortune, Dune is also a planet of fabulous wealth, only source of a drug prized throughout the Galactic Empire. But such a prize is worth killing for, and House Atreides now faces treachery and deceit on an undreamt of scale. So that does sound awesome. I haven't really read much sci-fi at all, actually, but I've been really interested to get into it. And that sounds super cool. I mean, just the description does sound like I would enjoy it. Um, but yeah, thank you once again for the copy and the recommendation. That is going to be in... I keep forgetting what I say. August. So for September of 2023, this is actually my birthday month, so I wanted to pick something that sounded quite interesting, and I have read this description, and it sounds really, really cool. Um, definitely something that I'd be really interested in sort of contemporary, um, and some, yeah, contemporary queer literary fiction sounds super, super awesome. Um, so this one was given to me by, by my friend Maddie. Um, you can find her at Madeline McFarlane on Instagram for her writing. She's a poet. She's a writer. Again, not much I can say about all these guys. Like all these people I know that are poets and are writers are incredible. Like they're, they're just amazing. They're work, they're work machines. Um, I don't know how they find time to sit down and write all this stuff. Like, um, I struggle to do that, and these guys fit it in, and they get some amazing stuff done. So follow her on Madeline McFarlane on Instagram for her poetry. Then you can follow her at uh, Ghost Girly on TikTok for her. She, that's where she does, like, her bookish, um, her bookish content um, and sort of just, like, reviews and um, videos like that on her TikTok. Um, amazing stuff. So her recommendation was We Play Ourselves by Jen Silverman. Haven't heard of the title, haven't heard of the author, uh, but when I read this, I just thought it sounded amazing. Uh, so, after a humiliating scandal, a young writer flees to the West Coast to start over, where she is drawn into the morally ambiguous orbit of a charismatic filmmaker and the teenage girls who are her next subjects. So that sounds really, really cool. Um, I really like contemporary literary fiction, especially when you read the backs of them, they're just very, they're very um, elusive and they're kind of mysterious, and so... But then when you read them, they've got these huge themes and they're often really heartbreaking and just they really pull at you. And um, so I really can't wait to get to that in September, my birthday month. So thank you, Maddie, for that awesome recommendation. Uh, go follow her, guys. Um, don't do that thing, Archer. <laughs> don't do that thing. Okay, so I'm back. Um, if it looks like I look any different, I'm actually recording this. I'm with Winnie. Um, if it looks any different uh, to how I looked when you were just watching about... Five seconds ago, um, this is actually the second day of filming. My camera died last night, but I'm back nonetheless. So, so yeah, continuing from where I believe I left off last night, um, I believe that I was continuing off from my October TBR. So my October pick from my 12 friends idea is The Power by Naomi Alderman. And this is actually from my uh, friend and work colleague, Angie. Um, so I work at quite a few branches of libraries across like the eastern suburbs. Um, and one of the branches that I work at I work with the lovely Angie, and she has recommended this one to me. Um, she's actually got her own YouTube channel as well, so she does some really, really cute um, like reading vlogs and stuff and unboxings and sort of some lifestyle 
um, vlogs and just, yeah, how to make the most out of reading and stuff. So some cool stuff on there. Um, check her out if you are interested in that kind of thing. Um, but I've got it up here. I haven't heard of it or the author, actually. Um, the Power. The world is a recognisable place. There's a rich Nigerian boy who lounges around the family pool. A foster kid whose religious parents hide their true nature. An ambitious American politician. A tough London girl from a tricky family. But then a vital new force takes root and flourishes, causing their lives to converge with devastating effect. Teenage girls now have immense physical power that can cause agonising pain and even death. And with this small twist of nature, the world drastically resets. That sounds crazy. When she explained it to me, um, because I actually got her... Um, her recommendation in person when I was working with her I told her about this idea this video idea Um, and when she told me I was like whoa that sounds crazy it sounds like there's a lot going on in there and just reading there you've got some characters from quite a few different countries Um, you've got like sort of a one-sided power dynamic and a bit of role reversal and sort of stereotype play and stuff which just sounds amazing that's what's awesome about great literature is like books that can really make you question what life would be like if things were reversed and just all these things so that sounds really cool so thank you to angie for that recommendation uh next up for november i've chosen my friend alex alex's recommendation uh is the scorpio races by maggie stiefvata um like I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Alex is an amazing writer and poet, um, and you can check their writing out on uh, Write in Chaos um, on Instagram. Uh, yeah, their writing is just beautiful. Um, that's just all I can say. I'm, I'm not very good with picking words when it comes to describing things I really, really like um, and love because I just always say it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, um, it's amazing. Like, I just I can't really explain it. Um, check them out for yourselves, and then you'll be able to see exactly what I mean. Um, but yeah, so their recommendation was the Scorpio races. And when they actually gave it to me, they said, you have to read it in November. You have to read it in November because apparently the book is set in November. So I was like, of course, I'm going to put it in November. So the Scorpio races, uh, it happens at the start of every November, the Scorpio races. Riders attempt to keep hold of their water horses long enough to make it to the finish line. Some riders live, others die. At age 19, Sean Kendrick is the returning champion. He is a young man of few words, and if he has any fears, he keeps them buried up where no one else can see them. Puck Connolly is different. She never meant to ride in the Scorpio races, but fate hasn't give her, given her much of a chance. So she enters the competition, the first girl ever to do so. She is in no way prepared for what is going to happen. That sounds really awesome because I'm looking at it here on Goodreads and some of the genre tags are like mythology, uh, fantasy, so that's that sounds awesome, like fantasy that delves into mythology. I love mythological ideas and, and tales and legends and stuff, so that sounds super cool. Definitely right up my alley. Um, something quite different. I'm not entirely sure what a water horse is, so we'll see what that is. Um, I mean, I probably shouldn't be questioning it too much if it's fantasy and mythology, but um, no, that sounds really good and definitely sounds sort of like a break of pace in between some of the chunky classics I've got going on next year because I, I do like delving into different genres, especially when um, especially when I'm going crazy on the classics and the big epic fantasy books and stuff. And it looks like this is a standalone, so it, it is good to get some standalones in there as well. So yeah, thank you, Alex, for that. Follow them on Right in Chaos on Instagram. Amazing stuff. Now, my final book for this, uh, this video is my December pick. Now, you know who you are. <laughs> um, from how you've described it, I have chosen to put it in December because I want to uh, keep it as far away from me as possible. Uh, how, you des- how you describe this is making me terrified. I'm very nervous and I wanted to put it towards the end of the month because... I'm I'm scared, right? The way you put it was was scary. Um, so this is my friend Miro's recommendation. Uh, you can follow them at Ghost Cryptid on Instagram. Um, again, I'm gonna say it again. Amazing writing, poetry, um, and they've got an art account as well. And I've seen their art in real life, and they're incredible. So. Uh, go check them out. So they've recommended me a book called Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Um, the reason I say I'm scared is because. When when I posed this video idea to them, they were really excited, and they they were like, "Oh, I've got this recommendation. I want to be part of it. I want to be part of it." Um, and they screamed out this one book, and they said, "I'm going to give you like the most gut wrenching, heart tearing thing of all time." Um, and I was really like, I, I like hard books to read. I like books that are like a little bit 
you know, depressing and stuff. But this one sounded like the way they were explaining it was like, you know, you're going to throw up and like cry constantly when you read this. So that's why I put it in December. Miro, you, next time I ask you for recommendation, don't give me one that's going to make me feel guttily sick. Um, but I might actually like it. So we'll see how we go. Um, but the goal, uh, Gideon the Ninth, the Emperor, needs necromancers. The Ninth Necromancer needs a swordsman. Gideon has a sword, some dirty magazines, and no more time for undead bullshit. Brought up by unfriendly, ossifying nuns, ancient retainers, and countless skeletons, Gideon is ready to abandon a life of servitude and an afterlife as a reanimated corpse. She packs up her sword, her shoes, and her dirty magazines and prepares to launch her daring escape, but her childhood nemesis won't set her free without a service. So, that sounds really... That sounds huge. I'm not not surprised that that's part of a series because just from that small uh, synopsis, that sounds like it's going to have a pretty big world. Saying here, fantasy, science fiction, LGBT, fiction, horror, queer, adult. That sounds amazing. Like, oh my God. Especially if it's part of a series. And I really, like I said, I'm scared, but I do like um, hard to read books and books make you cry. And I actually said to them when they recommended it to me, I was like, I've read A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. And it's like, you cannot you can't hurt me, I'm, I'm numb to sad books, like, you cannot hurt me, um, but, uh, they were pretty insistent on this being a difficult book to read, so, but I'm very, very excited, so, we'll see if I continue, and we'll see how we feel, so, big thank you, first of all, before I wrap this up, I just want to say a big thank you for everyone who's participating in this, um, I was actually thinking possibly this time next year, when I finish this challenge, if you will, or this sort of, like, this idea, um, that I'll actually do like a five minute zoom call with all of these people. Just let's just very short and compile it, compile it together in a video as like an aftermath and afterthought sort of thing on what I felt on all these books and what I felt. Uh, and then they can tell me some things I missed. Um, just how I felt, you know, reading it, being their friends, um, and seeing, um, I'm, ho I'm hoping sort of the aim of this, the actual aim of this goal, this challenge is to hopefully be able to understand my friends a little bit better through literature, which is just, um, you can understand people and society and life through literature so well. Um, and so I actually am hoping to be able to see if I can understand some more things about these people. Um, with literature, it's kind of a really good way of like, if you recommend someone a book, it's a really good way of showing your personality and maybe like telling them some things without actually saying it. So um, I feel like sharing books is actually a much more personal um, experience than a lot of people would think so big thank you to all of you um go and check all the people i listed out down in the comments give them a follow on instagram tiktok youtube all that all of their pages will be down below um it would mean the world to me and you know i'm not sure if it'll mean the world to them but for me um as someone that supports these guys um like crazy i would love it if you guys rallied together and, and go when checked out their stuff not for the sake of numbers but for the sake of their the quality of their content like they're all amazing writers amazing youtubers amazing content creators artists in general um so go and check them out so big thank you to everyone and thank you to you guys all for watching um your continuing support means absolutely everything to me and this channel has been so much fun and i can't wait to keep growing and coming up with new ideas i really liked coming up with this one because i was like i was like oh this is a new sort of a fresh idea um so i'm really hoping you guys enjoyed it now let me know if you've read any of these because all these i haven't read any of these apart from frankenstein reread um but that's a little bit different but i haven't read any of these so if you've read any of them and you've got some warnings or um you know oh you're gonna cry at this or you're gonna love this whatever let me down let me know down below i'd love to hear um, and as I always like to say, keep reading and peace out. <laughs>